still like, you know, start talking, do a blow all my best stuff. And then, yeah. Oh, okay. Flynn, start talking now. Happy Sunday, Mike from Hound Dog Media here, and it's time for another episode of Conda Couch. With so many conventions delayed or canceled this year, we're bringing the best guests and the coolest hangouts of that experience right to you in the comfort of your own home. Today, we're delving back into the mysterious world of Agent 13. We've got a special tabletop gaming episode where all of our guests will assume roles of a ragtag group of recruits in Agent 13's quest to stop the evil brotherhood from world domination. Without further ado, I'll turn you over to special guest game master, Jay Parker. Hey everybody, I'm Jay Parker. Welcome to 1930s, where we go back in time and we're going to have some fun. So, tonight we have four great guests. Of course, this is Flint's show, so Flint Dill Dilly, who's playing... Flint, who are you playing tonight? Uh, I'm playing a really dumb guy named Big John. I'm a boxer, and I'm one of Agent 13's recruited agents to go on this mission. Uh, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, or so you're supposed to think, but uh, yeah, but I'm a muscle guy. All right, Big John Duffy. Peter Bryant, who are you playing tonight? Well, this evening I'm playing Professor Hannibal Khan, you see. I'm Indian, but I was raised in an English of the English upbringing. So right. I'm quite, quite a genius. And Peter Bryant comes to us from T the new TSR, and right. he also ran the Mythwits podcast. And yes. Peter and I came into the industry together, and yes, we've we... been been towel buddies ever since. Towel buddies, easy. <laughs> towel <laughs> buddies. James, James Carpio, who are you playing tonight? I am playing the mysterious woman from the East, Red Lotus. I my past is very shady and honestly unknown. After the Brotherhood got their hands on me with uh, experiments, however, in my mission to track down. Uh, certain groups of criminals i'm slowly starting to find myself and find myself in the employ of agent 13. awesome james carpio comes to us from the new tsr he has also written fallen empires he is the man when it comes to pulp if you need pulp we're not talking about orange juice we're talking about james carpio yeah. and last but not least is steve parento or jack burton and he's calling himself tonight steve who are you playing tonight Hi, I'm playing Nurse Margot from New York City, and I've been drafted to help out with Agent 13 on this mission tonight. I help patch up the crew and help give some lead uh, substitute uh, to the uh, other guys. Awesome. Steve Parentu comes to us from Tolocon. He is one of the key people at Tolocon. Without him, the convention would not function. Or at least would not be safe for the rest of us to carry out our evenings of mayhem. All right, gentlemen and ladies, you all have your characters tonight. So let us begin. You're okay, you all have your sheets in front of you. Or in, so mm -hmm. on your sheets, you're gonna have the location areas with the little boxes. Your those boxes should be equal to 10% of your constitution, which when I was creating these characters, I apparently screwed up. So just make sure you're you're Hit thing round working. down or round up? Round round down, because I'm round gonna up. be mean. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was the only thing. So as we dig into the game tonight, gentlemen and ladies, you are part of the 13, consisting of individuals saved by Agent 13. These men and women have sworn have sworn to thwart the Brotherhood. They have also taken an oath to locate mystical items that could be used for evil and lock them away in a secret vault known as the Depository. There are only 13 members of the 13 at any given time. The 13 are able to call upon other agents that 
or others that Agent 13 has saved in order to carry out their mandate. Members of the 13 can be, be identified by responding to the dawn brings and responded to with the hidden out of the shadows. All right. Hopefully that's not too campy. Let us begin the adventure. That's so, not campy at all. We're loving it. Love it. All right. See, I gotta be careful because because Drake is like the godfather of this stuff. He'll show up at my house and be like, we need to talk. I've got a blackjack for you. We need to talk. Okay. So we'll start with Hannibal King. Um Hannibal King uh Hannibal Khan, sorry, not Hannibal King. Hannibal Khan. <laughs> All right, we're doing well tonight. Hannibal Khan, you've been summoned to New York, to Manhattan, to Chinatown to meet with some Germans. Of course, as you know, it's not everything as, as, as simple as it seems because you have your backstory. So, mm -hmm. so that is your situation. So for the 13, you're being briefed by by a gentleman it's not actually agent 13 he is on assignment or he's out there somewhere he so he explains to you about hannibal khan hannibal khan is a genius with electronics last week members of the 13 rescued his family during a raid on a safe house in india run by the brotherhood the family has asked the 13 to go and save him he is somewhere in new york an ally of agent 13 has reported hannibal's name came up in a Nazi communication from Berlin in the location he will be at in one night. So you basically, you got a, you got a, a telegram from overseas saying that this person has been rescued or his family has been rescued and you need to go grab them. So one of those little scenarios, Red Lotus, mm -hmm. in your situation, you are tracking a clue about this group called the Triumvirate which has led you to a cargo ship heading for America from China. Um, when you eventually caught up to the ship, it was sinking because it had been actually it was hit by a torpedo from a German U-boat. You managed to board the ship and found that all hands were dead, skinned alive and no signs of their flesh. Each had a triangle burned into their foreheads, which is the sign of the triumvirate. You receive a, me you receive a message shortly after from Agent 13 that the Germans might have something of interest and it'll be going to New York City in one week's time. And you're given the address of the Gold Dragon, which also happens to be a Tong font, a front. Ooh, should have drank a monster before this game. <laughs> and Hannibal, as for what you know, the Brotherhood has been saving, saving Khan, or slaving Khan on a project that they call the Cyclops. You have managed to... Um, managed to condense the device to the size of a suitcase. The Cyclops is able to open an atom up, like a little hole in an atom, without destroying it. Um, you've been told to pack up the Cyclops because you're heading to New York to meet with, with a German that may have an artifact that would be useful to the Brotherhood. And they threaten your family again and say, if you do not do this, your family will suffer the consequences. So, and that's where we're at. And of course, Steve... Or nurse Excuse me, uh, what am I doing here? I, you know, I've been walking around on the street in Chicago somewhere talking to myself and people are looking at me funny. All right. So, uh, Big John Duffy has has actually gotten That's a job in, has gotten a job in New York for a short period of time to do a do a couple bouts. Oh, well, I'm in New York. Circuit. I thought I was in Chicago. I can never no, tell what kind of look alike. Yeah, yeah, okay. start Start spreading the news, John Duffy. Start spreading okay, the news. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is New York. Yeah, the Yankee pennants. I see. So you and Nurse Margot have have teamed up to go check out, um, or actually go retrieve Hannibal Khan and rescue him from the Brotherhood. And luckily for you guys, you have a general. You have a location. Because Nurse Margot's best friend, who is what's your, who's your best friend there, there Nurse Margot? Guinea Lewis. Yeah, Guinea Lewis calls you up and she's like, "You won't believe what I heard. I heard that the the Germans got a guy named Hannibal Khan going going to a club. I bet you this is something you use people be looking for." Yeah, it sounds interesting. My my people are interested in that. Do you know what so club she, it is, Guinea? 
Yeah, she's it's down in Chinatown. You can't miss it. Gold dragon with a big gold dragon at the front. Big gold dragon? Yeah, sounds like a real gas. Yeah, I fought the gold dragon once. He wasn't what he's cracked up to be in. Wow. It was orange dragon. I can't remember. So the Gold Dragon is a nightclub in Chinatown in Manhattan, known for its colorful shows and a hub for great ethnic drinks and meals. It's also a hub for the Tong for Tong criminal activity. So this is like the place where the Tongs kind of all hang out to to do business and, and do their stuff. But it's not actually a a Tong owned business per se, but they they you know if you want to find the Tongs. You just walk into the gold dragon and start trouble, and that's where that's where they'll be. They have thongs. <laughs> Only in time travel. Only in time travel, Nurse Margot. So, you've all been given the location. So, same thing with Red Lotus. You have the location. Um, Hannibal, you have the location clearly because you're being escorted by by the Brotherhood, and so. The irony is you all arrive about the same time to the gold dragon. Now the, the scene that you, you, you have is, so when you first go into the gold dragon, uh, the front half is all club. There's a large stage and a dance floor further back. Uh, tables are closer to the main door. Basically, if there's a fire, the people who are eating can get out first. Um, there are private booths off to the left and right of the stage. There is a jacket room just inside the main entrance on the left of the left, and the bathrooms are on the right. The lighting inside is mostly lantern, but the dance area has a chandelier. Above the stage, there's a massive golden dragon head with fiery eyes looking down. Just past the stage, on the right is a doorway into the kitchen, which has a large cooking area into why am I talking about this stuff? Because it's not relevant to whatever hell you're about to do. All righty. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Get it out of your system now, Peter. I didn't really say anything. Do it. I, ah, it's okay. Go ready. All right, gents and ladies. So, how do you want to approach this? So, you, you know where the, the, you have the general idea where the club is. Now, do I know who any of these people are? are we introduced. Uh, uh, do I, who are these boogers? All right. So, in the case of Nurse Margo, you do know her. Um, I mean, big John, we've worked out together. Remember that case? Yeah, she, yeah, you, she's patched pat, pat, me together a number of times. Yeah, I, I know Nurse Margo. You know, you know Nurse Margo because she's got that violin case with the freaking, you know, the gat stuffed in it. <laughs> for for a nurse, for a nurse, she knows how to how to make people dance. This is how I do surgery. This is my medical supplies. Uh, you make them dance, I put them down. How's that sound? Oh, dance. I never thought you'd ask. Let's go inside. All <laughs> right, I'm coming. All right, so that solves what you two gents are doing. Red Lotus, you see you see this burly boxer dude with giant, like, pretty scary-looking fists and a fuggly-looking lady with half her face all kind of eaten like Hamburg. Oh, in, yeah. in, a, in a goofy eye. I'm I'm in a red cocktail dress. I have my coat over my arm, which I have my Dao, my my Chinese. Basically, it's a katana uh, in the coat itself, and just kind of laying on the chair next to me. Um, just I look very high society, uh, red gloves. So the whole outfit's red, and um, just kind of slowly watching everyone as they come in and taking note. Uh, the boxer definitely jumps on my radar as someone who's possibly dangerous uh the nurse may not be what she seems so attention is kind of moving in that direction All and right. i'm sipping my giant cocktail that they would have drank in the 50s it had like seals jumping in and out of it and <laughs> whatever you know it's, it's the 1950s or it's 30s it's a so, little monkey on a unicycle so the nurse in in the boxer gets some dancing in real quick and the host is like Oh, oh! Can can we have you come, come see? We have actually have a table reserved for you, and so Red Lotus is sitting at a table. So you're actually escorted over to a table with this this lady sitting there, wearing wearing all red and stuff. 
drinking a a very funky looking cocktail and the waiter's like please sit why thank you just so sweet so he starts pouring water but when he does he's pouring it into the wine glasses not the water glasses what, and, what he, and he and he bumps he he bumps um red lotus a little bit and he spills water onto the napkin that the water glass is sitting on and red lotus you notice there it looks like there's something written on the napkin um i immediately just kind of nonchalantly brush with my hand and kind of look at what's written on the napkin all right so on your napkin on the bottom half there is part of a message that says back room now do we have like uh, is it kind of like the shadow where we have like big agent 13 rings or something that we can like identify each other or uh, you, you have it invisible yeah yeah semi-invisible tattoos Okay. So yeah, you can you can identify each other. Okay. So um <clears throat> I look up at 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 the at both the nurse and the boxer and um I just say very quietly, I think we are expected in the back room. Let's go. So, so the waiter the waiter bumps we haven't the waiter us no drinks yet, but uh, okay. The waiter bumps the boxer back into his chair and spills water on his water his um water his wine glass i'm sorry and it appears to be there's something written on the bottom of that he's awful clumsy isn't he there's yeah, writing yeah. showing up yeah he spilled it all over my pants i don't want it to look like an inside job just stop spilling that water all over the place i'm so sorry sir i'm so sorry here use your napkin to clean it up <laughs> <laughs> They got some funny ideas about manners in this place. All right, so uh, try to read this. Okay. All right, John Duffy, yours has has an L and then a slash and a far back, and far is not spelled correctly. And then the waiter <laughs> walks up to the nurse. And I he looks at you and goes, do you have a thing for the obvious? <laughs> or are you, do you have enough water? Oh, at this, thank you. At this point, I, I expect a waiter to pull out a fire hose and like drench the nurse. <laughs> this is the clumsiest waiter I ever saw in my life. I'll, I'll I'll take my napkin away and look at it. So under your napkin, it says "meeting in." Okay. So each of you has part of a message. You guys need to figure out which order it goes. Let's see. Let's figure this out. I, I think we just go to the back room and don't try to figure no nothing out. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't want to get spilled on no more. Let's just let's just get away from this table. Maybe even bring some bring drink yet. No. Next there'll be hot soup and then like a steak <laughs> thrown on yeah. our lap. Yeah, I don't want any of that hot oil they put on the uh, finger bingos. Uh, I mean, no. So, so Duffy's like like talking about like the bad service and the waiter the waiter is shaking their head and they're like well that person didn't complain and he points over and you see at the table there are two men wearing suits and there's an Indian gentleman sitting at the table and then the waiter walks off so Hannibal you're sitting there you're you're brought in and you guys are sitting waiting and a, a Chinese gentleman comes up to the table and he's like they will see you now and the men get up and they're like, let's go. And they escort you out to the back. So you all see him being escorted um, to the back. Yeah, they've got my cocktail. <laughs> Jeez. Some, some don't feel no right about this. So well, I guess we should go back there. Well, see that's what the note says. Right they're serving drinks in the back. Oh, drinks. <laughs> so Hannibal, they, they escort you to a back room. And basically, it's like there's a hallway with a whole bunch of like private dining areas. And then the far back, there's a very ornate door. And they knock on the door, the door opens, and it's a room just packed full of Chinese um, antiques, antiquities. And they're just all jammed in there. And there's a beautiful fireplace and stuff. And there's a table at the middle of the, in the middle of the room. Um, and there is a, a gentleman sitting there who is not Chinese. 
Okay. And staying next to me is a very brutish looking fellow. Um, and they, they shut the door. The Tong, the Tong gentleman who brought you all back, he's like, he's like, here you go, gentlemen. May your business be fruitful. And one of the one of the, the brotherhood people looks at the germ, the gentleman and he, he's like, and he says, Hi Hitler. And the other one's like, Hi Hitler. And he I'd like hands, to before you leave, could you perhaps go get my cocktail? I was left at the table and rushed out rather quickly and a little parched. In a second, the German pulls out a <laughs> gold, a gold pyramid um, that has ornate designs carved into it, and he sets it down. And one of the Brotherhood members looks at you, and he's like, "Set up the Cyclops around, you know, using the pyramid as as the center." All right then. So I'm, I guess it's like in a briefcase or something. Yeah, it's a big suitcase. Mm-hmm. Suitcase. Oh my God! All right. Well, have, you been dr- have you been drinking? Have I been drinking? You know, your character. Oh, yeah. No, actually, no. No, no. He wants to be drinking. They okay. Took because I must say, we're going to be we're gonna be rolling to set the Cyclops up. He ain't <laughs> been, been able drinking. to get no drinks this whole time been, we've been here. Yeah, I haven't been able to get my drink yet. Well, I don't think you have a drink. <laughs> I'm the Cyclops. Right. So, uh, so I carried it. I was like, I was like, you should have an escort me in here. You could at least carry it in my suitcase. I mean, come on. I set it up. Professor, the- hurry up! We don't have all night. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. You notice my- the guy? You notice the guy next to him has got a grease gun. The guy, right. the guy sitting at the table. I'm like, I'm like, you can't rush these things, man. It's the Adam. So <laughs> set the thing up. Is it like a like a dev- like a like a hokey like uh, like yeah? It's it's device, kind of like tubes and stuff and yeah. It's it's got some interesting okay. You know, Diodes like a, and stuff like, like a dish and like a little antenna coming out of the front of it or something like that. Yeah. And the, okay. the, and so the, basically they're like like now place the pyramid where where you would have had the atom if you were gonna yeah, you yeah. know. My good man, I know what I'm doing. I've got it. I've got it. Don't you worry. Don't it. screw the don't screw this up. You know what will happen. Yes, we will all disappear in a puff of smoke. So you best hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> you know the consequences for me are the same they are for you. Enough <laughs> talk. Okay, do well, it. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. All right. So is this a uh, is this a, a skill roll here? Actually, I won't make you roll for a skill roll because I mean it's your device. You invented it. Okay. All right. So so it's a given that, that I get set up right. Yeah. Now the question is, are you going to set it up properly or are you going to feck with the Germans? Well, see, they've got so as far as I know, my family's still in danger. Yep. There's no one here to help me. I'm all by yep. myself. There's a big dude with a grease gun. There's this obvious like Chinese uh, gangster. Uh, no, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to I'm going to set it up properly. My character is he's not a uh, he's he's too smart for that. Too smart to uh, do something stupid like that. Yes, he is. Jay, you'll you'll I, notice I gave I gave you the character that best parallels you. Okay. I unclick one clasp of my violin case. Click. As you guys are walking out back, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I John and I show him the violin case, and I'm, I open one of the two snaps. Yeah, Nurse Margot's getting pretty hot under the collar for a little little gat smat there. Uh oh. So Hannibal, they want they you set it up, and they're like, "Thank you," and they escort you out. You don't want to. You need me in here to run. No. You. And You're gonna run one, that of the, one of the. One of the other guys that escorted you up back there, he reaches in his pocket and pokes you with a pistol, and he's like, move. My good man, that's awfully rude. Fine. I, I'll walk. I mean, what else am I going to do? All right. So as you start walking out, you can t- you turn back to look, and they turn on the, the Cyclops, and the pyramid's under, and at the top of the pyramid is where the atom would be, and it starts opening up like it was like a like an empty box or a gift box or something. Okay. And the door shuts. All right. So you guys see these, you see the a Tong gentleman meets you at the door, Hannibal, and starts walking you back to get you your drink. Oh, very good then. Uh, at least, at least we've got something right here. And that's where you come across these three gents. Gents, you see Hannibal walking your way with a Tong gentleman standing next to him, escorting him. Gent and two ladies. Oh, that's right, gents and two ladies. 
So, uh, so, so you got Red Lotus there. Is she uh, is she a comely looking lady? Um, let's see. I guess that would be. I'm going to say yes, although I don't remember. I think there's actually like a charisma thing here, but um, yeah, she's fairly good looking, kind of plain, has that like that kind that uh, the bangs going across the bob haircut. The bob haircut. So I, I I'll wink and I'll say, oh hello there. Hello. Wait, uh, what? Wait, where's her charisma? I, I I don't have I don't have her bio, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm just gonna. It's just you have an advantage or a disadvantage. Yeah, so I'm just going to say disadvantage. Not super attractive, but you know, that's all right. Average. Well, I'm not real picky, you see. <laughs> yeah, I think in the yeah, age of thirteen world, there's no such thing as a not super attractive woman in this. Yeah, might, yeah. might not hit on hamburger face, but you know, <laughs> Hannibal, you're married, dude. Huh? You're married. I'm not a good man. <laughs> Look, <laughs> okay, okay. Next time, next time, Peter, I'm going to send you the, his incomplete written bio instead of give me the brief. <laughs> okay, yeah, because you said family being out. That could be my dad and mom. I don't know. So it's my family, family, so my wife and, and like kids. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, he's brought up in a proper Indian household, English, so probably doesn't do that. <laughs> All right. So, what do you guys want to do, though? I mean, you've you've got you've got the person you're you think you're looking for walking towards you with a with another gentleman. So, everyone in the club they're all they're all dressed really nice. Even the guy, even the tongs, or I mean, they're wearing cheap suits, but they still look presentable. All right. Um, I'm gonna. So, there's only one tong, uh, like gang member walking with uh, the Indian. Uh, I'm, but we're, the three of us are walking together though. So it's, uh, I'm actually, well, I'm going to take a chance. Why not? Let's start this, this thing happening. Um, I, I just walk up, uh, to the Tong member and in Mandarin. So hopefully they speak, they don't speak Cantonese or any of the other dialects of Chinese. Um, and just say, um, uh, I was, uh, I was sent, uh, to um, I, w- I was sent to uh, entertain uh, your your guest. He responds back in Mandarin. He's like, "What guest?" And uh, she nods and smiles and looks at um, uh, Khan. Well, I say that is that is very nice, very very hospitable. He's like I. He's like, I don't know you. I don't recognize you. So she's speaking. Go back to go back to where you came from. I go, hold on, tuck, 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 my good man. My, my, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, do you speak Mandarin, uh, Khan? No, no. Because oh, yeah, so this is probably one of those heated arguments in Chinese that you see those the yeah, time where it's just like. like pointing, but she's like pointing at me like blah blah blah, and he's like nah, yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> what is she saying? What is she saying there? Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna to not back off? No, I'm. Uh, no, I'm not gonna back off. I'm gonna get kind of uh, in his. Uh, I'm gonna get in his face, and hopefully, the two other people who are hopefully part of the same organization that I am will do something fun or start a bar he, fight. Or he op- he opens up his jacket and pulls out a knife, and he's like, "Go back to where you came from." I, I duck so Big John can punch him. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh. All right, Big John. That'd be Flint. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know what to do. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my earplug. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know what, what to make of all this stuff. There's people who are speaking this funky language. Uh, you know, I got this guy. I don't see why we don't just take him out of here and be done with this. And I'm much like these Germans here. So what are you what are you gonna do about the Chinese guy who just pulled a knife on you guys? No, I'm gonna give him a big a big hey bailer. All right. <laughs> so, so Flint, do you remember how to play how to play this game? Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, actually, I haven't played uh, Top Secret since uh, like 1989. So I, I I've been transparent about this. All right. So. Oh yeah. Hold on a second. I got I got it right in front of me. 
I gotta look it up too. It's D two D tens, right? Yeah, two D tens. Yep, and it's two. your it's your, so basically if you're trying not to do anything funky, you want to roll percentiles and uh, get underneath the score that it's attached to so i believe in this case it might be under dexterity for hand to hand um however okay, depending yeah, how difficult things are uh the gm could say you can roll half that or quarter that depending on the the difficulty of the roll so if it's a really hard thing to do it'll be a quarter of that skill and if it's um, middle of the road it'll be half or at full and then you take the tens die as the location and the um, the ones die as the damage to that body part. Sorry, I played way too much of this back in. All the, right, so the, my my dexterity is forty four. Actually, okay. it doesn't does, it doesn't apply the dexterity. It's just the skill that they use. So yeah, what's the skill do you have? He's got boxing. I uh, boxer. Well, uh, occupation boxing, uh, throwing, area knowledge, docs. But boxing, right. I think, would be it. Yep, it's yeah, going to be boxing. And what? Uh, what's the number next to it? Uh, two. So that's All right. Plus ten. Plus what? Ten. It's yeah. Plus ten. So whatever boxing mm -hmm. is, as far as so, I'm just trying to look this up now. Uh, base. I guess that'd fall under B. Oh, boxing. So it's strength base. So what's your strength? My strength is eighty three. All right. So. Basically, you'll be attacking, say, 93 or under on a percentile die. Okay, good. So uh, it's my D10, right? So I got seven, so I'm already under it, right? Yes. Yep. So, but you want to roll the entirety of it. So 70, what? Uh, it's seven and uh, 12. It's step five is my second one. All right. So, so 75. So it's going to hit an area. Total, uh, sorry. So basically, by that swing, you hit him in the arm, seven. You have a two. Um, so you can bump that to either a uh, a five. Well, actually, with that bump, it'll hit him still. Basically, you're hitting him in the arm at this point. But anyway, that five points of damage, that's how many boxes are filled of non-lethal damage on that body part track. What's that have to do with the knife he's holding? Am I did I hit the knife hand or am I really dumb? Yeah. So so what what you do is so you go to hit him as as um Red Lotus kind of steps aside and you you hit the because you can bump it anyway. So you're gonna hit his shoulder and you actually dislocate his shoulder when you hit him. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean your that would happen. Your your uh, strength is like ridiculous. So when yeah, you punch a him, boxer. Yeah, you hit him and you, you actually hear like the popping sound of his shoulder popping out of place. And he like drops the knife. He's like, oh! And he's, he's like, kind of, he's trying not to jump up and down screaming, but he's, he's still instinctively trying to do it. And you can hear, hear it grinding as he's like, ah! Like, oh! My word, that's disgusting. Um, he's, he's crying slightly. Where are we at in the restaurant? More towards the front door, more towards the back you guys, door. You guys are actually in the back hallway near the meeting room where they were camped out. Is there? Does and it look we, like? If, if we go through the hallway, does will that take us back out to the front door? Yep. Well, I mean, does what are we like, seeing for exits? Is there a if big? You turn around, yeah. If you turn around, you'll go. You'll go back out to the, the dance floor. But what about us? Can we can we exit to the back from here? Or is there like a nope. back door? No. No, you have to go in through the kitchen. All right. Oh, but no one could see us. We're all kind of in a private area right now. Yep. And the music's pretty loud, so they can't hear him screaming. Okay. I'll I uh, hit him with oh. my violin case. Is You're going to what? I'm going to remember my dot so Big John could punch him. Yeah. I take my violin case and I hit him with it. All right. Nurse Margot, give us a, give us a roll, <laughs> roll to do that. Let's see here. Nurse that would be basically basic melee, which is half strength or half dex. It's going to be it's going to have to be either half strength or half dex because you don't have have any skill for that because you have it for your, yeah. your weapon. So I didn't That's think right. a machine gun and firing would be a good idea right now. So I missed. I rolled a 90. Right. Holy okay. cow. Okay. So that goes flying over the head. I guess uh, what I'm going to end up doing is grabbing my coat and wrapping it around his head. 
using the thing to basically kind of choke him with the uh, the coat. Okay, go ahead, Red Lowe's. Give us a roll. All right. So what do I have here? Do, 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 do. That's good. I don't even have a... So I guess, yeah, that's going to be a, have to be a half dex or half strength for me because I don't have basic melee. Uh, I'll you use my ac- Chinese ac- mysticism. That's the skill I'll use. You can use acrobatics because technically you're... All right. Oh, neat. Okay. So uh, that's why I gave you that was so you could do, you could do some crazy stuff. All right. So if I can, well, I have every dice here, but a 10, hold on. I'll just do this. He he shows up to the game with all the books held up, but not the dice. (laughs) So I got a, I I roll a 58. Uh, So that's going to be five. I have two um, that could bring it up to a three, which is uh, center. Um, well, that was my my attempt anyway. So it would have been eight points in area five, which is kind of the shoulder. So maybe I ended up like gra- like the one arm's broken. I ended up grabbing the grabbing the other arm with my coat. Actually, because you said because because uh, Duffy got area seven or area five, so and you just rolled area five. So yeah, you you grab the broken arm. Or the dislocated shoulder, and you've literally just twisted it. So basically, you're pulling on an arm that's not attached to the. So you, it's, it's it's like a rubber rubber man, I guess. But it's and he's like ah oh, oh, ah oh. ah. So now he's screaming really loud. All right. Well. Oh, I can't fix that. <laughs> what about our our almost not to be drunk Indian friend? Are you doing anything, or are you just amused? <laughs> You guys to finish so uh i have a question so i was brought here um kind of under duress right like kidnapped or okay so they got this guy occupied but remember they have your family so yeah well they have my family but we're being attacked and i don't know who these guys are so uh i'm gonna start like doing that thing where you step feel like i'm just like kind of like stepping away and like getting ready to get made a, a bolt all right so you're you're back in, you're backing up which of course you're backing up to the back to the ornate door where they're having the meeting but oh that's okay you you don't know i mean you don't know what's back there so yeah so you're you're slowly backing away and it's like so you guys see Hannibal's backing away from you and by the way, the the Tong fellow passed out from from the pain. Okay, good. He, he blacked out. He was almost blacked out when when Big John Duffy whacked him, but now he's like, I mean, that's just like here. Let's just make it hurt a little bit more. Well, I take I a knife, and then we put him in a closet somewhere. You took you took his knife. Well, yeah. Is it- did this happen out in the club where everybody could see? No, in the hallway. Oh, in the hallway. Okay, okay. So basically, you went you went down this hallway next to the all stage, right. and then that's where all the private dining facilities are and, and whatnot. Well, gentlemen, ladies, um, talk, you, talk right? about this a little bit. What, Steve? We all we know who he is, right? So yeah, you have know. a general idea who he is. We know we're looking for Hannibal Khan. Is that you say that? No, oh, I'm just saying from our briefing when I was yeah. catching up on our briefing. Yeah, we know who Hannibal Khan is, and we we had a look for this person. So we like, hi, I'm Nurse Margo. I was sent here to find you. Uh, uh, not for anything dubious, I should hope. Oh no, no, of course not. We're just here to help you. Well, uh, I don't know. Helping or not, they've, they've got my family. I'm, uh, I don't want to let anything happen to them. So your family is a victim of the Brotherhood. They've yeah. been saved. Hey. Let's get out of here. We'll tell you all about your family. Uh, all right. Well, now Jay, this thing that they have, this uh, uh, cyclops, device, the cyclops device, yeah. right? This thing, this thing is like dangerous in the wrong hands, right? 
yeah, it definitely, if it's not calibrated just right and someone tries to randomly use it and it, that's not you, yeah, you could you could blow up a whole entire city with it. Oh, great. Um, and your name would be all over it. <laughs> the the think- gentleman from India that blew up Manhattan. Right. Like, like, you all seem pretty capable. Um, we have a situation. There's a, a device they have of mine in the back there, and it's quite dangerous. Um, there's only how many days? There's only like two of them in there. Um, there was the two Brotherhood members, and then there was the two Germans. Two Brotherhood and two four people. Um, maybe if I distract them, you could run in and grab it. Maybe if you distract him, I can run in and grab it. Yeah, I think I like that one better. <laughs> well, how many yeah, people are? Yeah, the point is, let's get it. Is uh, barrel through, and you know, there's four of them in there, but the two of them are well-armed Germans. Well, that's a German. Yeah, they never took a punch like they're about to get. They kick them so hard they'll think they're in jail, looking out of their rib cage. They've got little machine guns. Well. I think I might be able to make the distraction, but you're going to need to be able to respawn quickly uh, before I before I go ahead and put my life on the line. All right, I put All my right. Po- I put my pocket knife. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, hey, so that's a good pocket knife right there, buddy. <laughs> so you you see Red Lotus stand to the side. She kind of flings on her coat pulls her slouch hat from within one of the pockets and places it on and obviously removes her sword. And she just starts walking towards the wall to the thing. Um, All right, stop, was... right, stop right there before you do it. Uh-huh. Hey, big John, she's going to die. <laughs> I, I just realized what you were about to do. Like, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Otherwise, this game would be done in like 10 minutes. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so as you start walking towards the door you see like the lights the the lanterns the oil lanterns in the hallway they start to dim and flicker a little bit and then a purple mist starts puffing out from underneath the door that's not good and then all of a sudden you hear, we're getting out of here boys you hear you hear screaming and gunshots coming from inside the room well, so we don't, so we don't go in there <laughs> and then more screaming and more gunshots and then, yeah. So, what do you want to do at this point? I go get my cocktail. <laughs> I think we're yeah. I think we're heading out back out of the front of the restaurant. Uh, this place is. Uh, they got some weird dancing or something going on in there. We don't want. We don't want to go in. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, I will. I will start moving back towards the restaurant part. Probably looking to get out of there. There's nothing like when you're like, I want to do something epic, and then. Oh crap! Never mind. <laughs> They're not going to epic into that. As you get, as you guys get, just get to the the threshold, going out to the dance floor, you see there are are seven Tong enforcers with Tommy guns, and they're what? all running your and they're all running your way, and then a serving tray goes flying across the club and knocks one of them out, and the waiter standing there. And he rips off his his waiter's outfit, and it's Agent Thirteen. Oh. And he's like, "Get the device. I'll take care of them." And he runs at the Tong guys. No, the device. Oh, like the Tong guys. <laughs> and the screaming and the. <laughs> with meet meet the the screaming and the purple and the. <laughs> Okay, so we go back into the hallway. I open the violin case, take out my 45 Thompson, and prime it. Oh, say you are full of surprises, you all. That's right, because none of you saw the character sheets. Okay, <laughs> except for Flynn. surgery. <laughs> yeah, she cracks the thing open. And there's like a complete medical kit, and then a, and then in the middle is the Tommy gun. Well, I'm just saying, it's like I've got katana person and a Tommy gun, and I'm like. Well, it's a knife. Yeah. I've got my knife, yeah. Hey, Big John Guffey does it with his fist. What are you complaining about? I'm not complaining about anything. You go first. 
I have a go down the hallway, I guess. Go knock on I knock on the door but stand to the side in case somebody shoots through the door. Yeah. That's all right. You knock on the door. Bang on the door loudly and make a rock as to see if anybody responds with gunfire. No gunfire. Matter of fact, it's quiet. I'm feeling better already. John, I got no guns. Go in. <laughs> Let's get in there. Purple so smoke. You, <laughs> so you can open it. You can open the door, John Duffy. He's Flint, you can open the door. Yeah, yeah, I'm blasting through it. That's what I was saying. All right, he freaking John Duffy just practically he he pushes the door in, even the door opens outward, and when you go to push it in, it breaks off the hinges and falls over, and there's a body underneath the door. And the Did room I just is killed somebody, or is the body already there? Well, there there is a, a <laughs> macabre scene within with of the body that I will not describe that would would upset the most church-going person. There was an unutterable and, horror in the room. Yes. And it's not just it's not just the person under the door. You see the other the another gentleman that was wearing a suit in the same physical condition. The two Germans, one of them is actually dangling impaled from some artwork on a wall, and that would be the gentleman with the grease gun. And the one that was sitting at the table is still sitting at the table, but he is he has been relieved of all his outer covering. Wow. These then, guys are looking so good. And then at the center of the table is the Cyclops, and there is the pyramid. And the top of the pyramid is open. And there are tendrils dangling around outside of the hole in the pyramid with little little claws. And there is the purple mist in the room, and there are three gentlemen standing, probably about four feet apart, in the kind of in the shape of a triangle, um, wearing traditional and very ancient Chinese religious attire. Their faces are pasted white, and they are just standing there silent. I don't know why, but I think maybe we found the triumvirate. You know, I mean, I got to figure this out for a while, but I got this feeling. Yeah, Red Lotus face goes to kind of a grim stare and uh, gets in a position with her sword kind of edging closer. So are the are these three standing around like like where the Cyclops? Is it like in, in the pyramid? Is it like in like like right in, on, the center? in the oh, center of the room? room. So right. you, have, you have you have the table, and then you have the door here. Yes. And then uh, gentleman, gentleman, or dude, dude, yeah. and then dude. Okay. And then the German what's, what's, sitting here. What's the nature of these tendrils? Are these tendrils just carved ornamental things, or are they swirling around trying to grab? They're, us? they're swirling around, but they look like they're made of leather. Right. So it might be a creature. It might be. I mean, I, do I think I'm seeing seeing something living? It could be it could be living because it just they look fleshy. We got Cthulhu sitting on, under the thing. All right, so but but uh, uh, Big John wouldn't be able to figure that out. So somebody else got to figure out. It's a Cthulhu. Sitting there. Um, well, I mean, I'll looking at the tentacle. Can I tell using my occult knowledge? Although it's Chinese mysticism, uh, would I be able to? try to figure out what it is or maybe a legend yeah, or give me, give me give me a role um using your your intelligence i believe because that's what you're gonna uh, what oh so don't use the cult oh, no, knowledge use, use your occult i'm sorry use your occult knowledge and, and give me a all right so i got a 23 and i got under half so yep okay so you recognize it um when you've been tracing the tracking the triumvirate there was there was tapestries you saw in a couple of locations that had these tendrils and that usually with these tendrils these specific ones um there's always a picture of a person wearing like strips of human flesh uh-huh like mama like mummified in dried human flesh and 
usually it's it's attributed to that individual. So it's it's basically it's it's attuned to a specific member of the triumvirate. All right. Do do I know what do I know a name or no? Or just I know that it's usually attuned to a, a specific member. Usually when you when you've gone to scenes like on the ship, for example, that what you saw on the ship is exactly uh -huh. what you're seeing in this room. Um, I'll just so um, so what, what academic knowledge does he have of this? It's you've seen you've seen it when you've gone to different when you've gone to locations where the triumvirate have been active. All right, and I'll I'll kind of um, on the, yell on, out. The, on the mystical end, it's it's attributed to a Chinese demon. Okay, so um, I'll just I'll just go demon magic. I was a demon, you say? So what happened to that thirteen guy who's supposed to come know what to do here? I, can we just go get the device? You're free to go Maybe in we and can grab close it. Close it back up again. No, the the, the triumvirate guys are just not moving at all. They're not acknowledging us. They're they're holograms or something. Yeah, they're just standing Are there. Their spirits are there. They're immobile. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And our mission off? is to get this thing, this object. Yeah, what are your... What Do are I your have a feeling that there's a way to shut it off? I mean, would a reasonable person looking at it think, oh, if I close up the pyramid, it'll, it'll you well, know... Well, in Hannibal's case, Hannibal's the, Hannibal will be the expert for that. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Walk with me. I'll go shut it off. Well, you listen. Want... I'll just I'll just kind of stand here and watch. I'm I'm good with dealing with Palookas and giving them a punch. I don't uh, I don't know what to do with this stuff. I don't do tentacles. I mean, they are kind of like boxing. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess maybe it's a, a beanbag or something. I don't know. Oh, They're only you... lady in red. Would you uh, care to join me on my walk up there? Because I don't want to walk there by myself. I'm I. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I'll nod and walk with you, but I'm really keeping my sword trained on those, um, on the triumvirate three who don't seem to be moving because either a, yeah, someone mentioned they might just be ghost images, uh, they could be in a trance, um, but I'm gonna ready to take a head off if, uh, if any of them move. Yeah, so there. Yep. Okay. So two or three of the tentacles suck back into the pyramid so now there are only two that are, are drifting around and they stop flailing and they the claws almost look like eye uh, kind of look like sensors and they turn a turn and they're pointed like right at professor professor hannibal oh right <laughs> stop walking <clears throat> i have a bad feeling about this <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think um right jay i'm gonna just look see and let's i'm just gonna t i'm just gonna flip my sword around in my hand and then swing at both the tentacles seeing if i can just amputate them go right ahead all right uh that is going to be a one and that is going to be a five a 15 which is actually under um, quarter. Oh, go ahead and roll for your damage. That's definitely going to be a, a whack, a whack. Uh, all right. Well, since I'm, oh, that's D8. Oh, there's D10. Finally, uh, D8. I just had a D8. There we are. Uh, that is going to be five points of damage. All right. You managed to lop off one of the tent, one of the tendrils, and there's still one left, but it's definitely, it's, it's, Spewing out like a a purplish goo blood thing. Well, and it, go and ahead. You actually and you hear a scree a screeching sound coming out of the pyramid. Close this damn thing. I'm, I'm right then. Yeah, I head over to the uh, the cyclops. Pretend All right. There's a cocktail in it. Just close the damn thing. So <laughs> as you as you go to to shut it off, one of the one of the men that's standing still. Like reaches out and grabs your arm. Oh, that's not good. Who who's grabs whose arm? One of the one of the three grabs grabs 
Hannibal Khan's arm. Oh, okay. He doesn't hurt you, but he grabs your arm to stop you from shutting it off. And he turns and looks, as he's turning to look at you, it just, it's like really just an unsettling feeling. Right. Right. Okay. I'm waiting for the so nurse with the Tommy gun to like. Oh, dang, you next. <laughs> I will. So basically, these things have started to move around, and, and or one of them. That, has. That, what I missed. One of them has. Well, yeah. do we know? I mean, I, you know, are we? Does anybody here sense an evil to them, or do we? Know, I mean, we know the Triumvirate probably aren't good guys, but in this particular fight with you know, since our real enemy is the Brotherhood, they might be allies against them. I, I'm not betting on it, but I'm just making sure you know. I just want I want to make sure I'm picking a fight with somebody I'm supposed to be fighting. They're defending the tentacles. <laughs> I'd say they're bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I mean you gotta take a whack with the sword. Have we taken a whack with the sword at the tentacles yet? Oh, yeah, we, yeah. yeah. One of one, one of was them severed. Been killed, yeah. Nurse Margot, what do you want to do? Well, if the person statue thing that's standing there is intervening to Hannibal I guess maybe I'll shoot him so you're gonna shoot the one that's grabbed Hannibal you're gonna shoot the one of the ones that's not moving no I'll shoot the one that's grabbed Hannibal assuming that it's uh, uh solid okay the pretty one... solid. Pretty so solid. we never we never assume anything in the world no go ahead so let's see how this works. Okay, I rolled a twenty-three. Oh, that's gonna be a hit, dude. Um, what's so I have basic farms and I have submachine gun zero. So submachine submachine gun zero means you you can actually use a submachine gun with no penalty. Okay, I got that right, right, Dre? What's that? I assume it is. If you have a zero, it just means you can use it with no penalty. Uh, yeah, you don't get a bonus to it. It's just your straight attribute or depend. Yeah, so. So is that reflex? Uh, what what skill is it? I use a Tommy gun, submachine gun. It's reflex. Submachine gun, which I think is Dex. Wait, there's a Dex. I don't have Dex. Uh, oh, there's Dex here. It would be basic heavy. Oh, machine gun is a Dex based skill. There you okay, go. Okay, so I have an eighty nine. Wow. And I rolled a twenty three. <laughs> Wow, that's is that quarter or is that no, that's half. Uh, that's half. Yeah, that's half. Okay, so twenty three was the hit. So is that sex area two number three? Um. Yeah. So with uh, when you're using ranged weapon modifiers, I oh burst. So here we go. Uh, fire burst gets plus five to their skill. And you oh, get to add cool. plus one to your damage roll as well. Uh, okay, so see. I made my quarter then. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Uh, let's see. Critical hits. It wasn't doubles. Take. Oh, here we go. Locations. Uh, do, do, do. Bump a body blow. Because it's hand to hand that does a weird thing. Like your first die is. Um, yeah, it does. Your, it's how much damage you do when the second die is. Location. Yeah, but for ranged weapons loading, I believe it's. Uh, I think it's just you roll a d10. Roll roll a d10, Steve. Oh, let's see. Wait a minute. No, the Tom says a d8. All right. Well, no, is it Again. d10 for for location? The location. Though? Yeah. Okay. Location d10. Roll d8 for damage. Location six. Shot his hand off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, you blow his you blow his hand off, and the the hand like literally I mean you shoot the hand off, and it drops to the ground. And when it does, it turns into like this weird white powder. And he he steps back, and he doesn't scream. But when he opens his mouth, his tongue rolls out all the way down. His tongue is probably about three feet long. I hate it's that. A, it's a bright red tongue. Who oh, that is popular with the ladies. <laughs> I'm gonna bop the guy in the nose. I don't care about this tongue. This is gross. I've seen worse stuff in the ring. All right, go ahead, Big John Duffy. <laughs> All right, Big John Duffy's gonna try to bop this guy in the nose. Okay, two, uh, uh, tens. Yep. Seven. 
74. So 74, that's a pretty high number. Um, yeah, but it's based on his strength, right? Yeah, which is he's well within his range. And yeah, you're you are going to hit him. Go ahead and roll for damage, location and damage. Or oh, 74, okay. the area four is going to be the other shoulder or the, the other shoulder. shoulder and seven damage. And seven damage. All right, you hit him. Man, Big John Duffy, I don't know how you how you win your boxing matches. You must like dislocate all their shoulders. <laughs> in their... <laughs> you, you hit him. You hit the thing, and it's like and you can you can hear like literally bone crack and a nice little compound fracture of the of the collarbone attached to the shoulder. Yeah. So you hit him, he's like bam, and he's like he doesn't make a sound though, and his tongue just flails. I never punched a demonic zombie before. I mean, when the tongue flails, does that mean it hurts? Or does that mean he likes it? I don't know what that means. Hey, <laughs> did, he, did he let go of me? Oh, yeah, because uh, uh, cause Nurse nurse Margo shot his hand off. Oh, that was excellent. All right. But the hand's still holding you. Yeah, you want to help hands, you with the hand? The hand's on the floor covered in a it, – it's turned to powder. All right, I'm running a, over a white to the That's right. You gonna you gonna tr go for the device again? Another one of the dudes grabs your hand. Can I dodge? Looks at you. Aww. Yes, go ahead. You may try to. You may try to dodge. I will let you roll for it. Reflexes. What are we talking? That's gonna be for dodging. That's gonna be. It's gonna be Dex. Dex. It's gonna be your Dex. All right. All right. So he reaches out. I'm trying to duck under. Because I knew that was coming. I, I I figured that. Flint, I am rolling so bad tonight. I don't know what the heck the thing is. Last night, great numbers. Tonight, it's like, what the hell? So, yeah, and last, night, last night, I remember, I was like rolling really badly at first and really well at the end. <laughs> I had the most embarrassing bad roll probably ever in the history of role playing when I like you know was unable to identify the guy I was hitting. So <laughs> I, have, I have a dex of 70 and I rolled a 34. So that's half. All right. Yes, you are. You are. You get to the device. Flicking the switch. You flick the switch, and the power the power shuts off, and then the the guy that went to grab you, he's kind of like standing over you, and then he just starts to fade away, and the box starts to close. And the tentacle goes back down. I'm not the box. The pyramid. And the tentacle starts going back down into the pyramid, and the other the other one standing there, he starts to fade too. And then the one that Big John Duffy totally messed up, he doesn't fade. Instead, he starts flailing around even more, and he he his body goes completely white, including his tongue. And he's screeching as he uh, flails and flails and flails. I'm dying. This is very head. gratifying. I'm just <laughs> behind that desk. Putting that desk between me and Flailing Boy. You mean a table? A table, right? Whatever, whatever it was. I'm behind it. All right. So you guys see Hannibal like duck behind the chair. He's like, no. I was okay, going. Um, Red Lotus, what do you want to do? I'm probably diving for cover as well. Especially with every, you know. That's the part where it explodes, right? <laughs> Because honestly, I have no idea what this thing is or what it's going to do, other than tentacles and big tongue things. And... Well, actually, in your case, um, Red Lotus, you you would recognize this because of your your Chinese occult, which is why I gave uh -huh. it. Um, it's now if I pronounce, I apologize if I do not pronounce this right. Why is my phone ringing? Hello Kitty is ringing behind me. Hmm. Okay, it's pronounced. If I say this right, it's diocese coat. Q, Q, which is it's a Chinese demon creature that's known for it has a long red tongue. Okay. I thought it was one of the three storms. <laughs> nice try, Jack Burton. Nice try. All right. So, and, but th this was destroyed, right? The, the demon? Yeah. Well, it's not destroyed. It's flailing around. Okay. Well, then I will can I will chop a, a chop at it if it's still moving. Okay. Give us a choppy chop. Uh, 
Ooh, 55. So 55, that's going to make that actually a critical hit. Oh, doubles. OK. Yeah, so doubles are basically. So let's. I was just actually looking at it's that. Multi, it's multiplied times two, isn't it? Because that's what it is for hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, I think. Yeah, it's um, here we go. For effects on location, brute critical hits. Any rolls of doubles that is good enough to hit as a critical hit. This immediately destroys whatever body part was hit. Ooh. So a critical hit to area zero, one, two, or three kills instantly unless the victim is willing to spend a luck point. Critical hits to four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine knocks the victim out. Though again, a luck point can prevent unconsciousness. So come on, hurry up and roll a foot, since that's the only thing we haven't oddball yeah. killed, chopped off yet. So it's um don't get hand, because you get hand, you're gonna miss. I got a six, but I can bump it two to either a five four or a six seven or a seven eight. So well you can seven eight. You can take him off at the leg. Yep, that's what I'll do. Okay. So you chop his leg off. So now, so you you hit it, and the the lower leg drops to the ground, and it turn it starts turning into this white powder, and so now he's missing a hand and he's missing a leg, and now he's hopping around, and then he I gets his balance. I drill him with the machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Nurse Margot. This Why am I picturing the Black Knight from like Monty Python the Holy? It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> I hit normally. I rolled a 51 out of my 89. Uh, roll one die, you said, James? Yep. Yeah. A location? Yep. I rolled a nine, which is the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, how many levels do you have in... Um, how so many levels? Just zero. Oh, okay. Because if you had more, you could actually bump it to zero and make it a headshot. But Nope, sorry. Nine. All right. So you blow off his other leg. Oh. Well, I mean, you know what? <laughs> You're going to make him dance. You're making him dance well. So <laughs> you take the other leg off. And again, when that, that limb hits the floor, it turns into this white powder and he drops to the floor. And now he's now he's like, he's crawling towards, actually he's going to crawl, he's going to try to attack Red Lotus because she's the closest person to him. With a headbutt. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I want to run over that. and just like give this guy another punch. Can I do that yet, or I? I yeah, go wait. go right ahead because I just completely botched my roll to attack. Okay, good. All right, so I, I'm rolling. Okay, I get. Oh, it's filled on. Let me clear. Uh, I get an eight, nine. I'm sorry, eight one, eight one, eight nine. Sorry, it, it totals it out and it's confusing. You're still you're still gonna hit. Um, and it's you do on the ground. You kick it a few times. Yeah, um, Big John Duffy really does get his kicks off of busting people's shoulders. You do you do his other shoulder, man. You you hit him, he like you cracked the other car. So now he's like, and, and by the way, James, when he came after you with the tongue, it yeah. hit the chair and it broke the chair in half. So oh, the, wow. clearly the tongue is a dangerous weapon. I'm going to see you kill this thing because John Duffy, I mean, you guys have messed this. The only thing left is the freaking head that's not like messed up. So it's like you, you hit it and you hear this crack sound and a few seconds later it turns into this pile of white powder. I put my, machine gun, I put my machine gun back in my violin case. Yeah, I start packing up the uh, the, the uh, uh, Cyclops device. Back in the suitcase. All right. Take the pyramid, take the pyramid. No, oh, I'm not touching that. <laughs> Look at this having suitcase to carry, you see? Uh, I take the pyramid. <laughs> Are you going to grab the pyramid? Well, Agent 13 did say retrieve the thing in the back, but he wasn't specific, so. So you just grab the pyramid with your bare hands. Well, so how many years How many years have you been gaming? <laughs> I turned off. <laughs> Luckily for you, it doesn't do anything to you. You do pick it up, and it's actually cold. With all the weird stuff happening, it's cold. I wrap in um, tablecloth. I'm a doctor. You hear, 
have. <laughs> you hear footsteps coming down the hallway. You don't hear any more noise coming from the dance from the club itself. But there are footsteps. There's a sounds like someone's coming down the hallway. Okay. Red Lotus, cover the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will actually look out the door. Um, does it look like just staff? Is there like armed people? What What does it look like? Well, it's Agent Thirteen, and he's, oh. he's he's walk he's walking down. He's got a he's got a a um, waiter's tray that he's carrying with him and a Tommy gun in the other hand. It looks like he probably got it from one of the tongs. Hey, and does it like, have a cocktail in that tray? <laughs> <laughs> he, he look, he yeah, looks you're at you out of the cocktail here the whole time. Right. He looks at you, Red Lotus, and he's like, it's amazing what a serving tray can do when people are in a panic. And he, he tosses it on the floor. It's like, so did you did you find find anything useful? I, I look over towards the nurse who is probably sitting there staring at a pyramid at this point. I get the again the bag. <laughs> oh. What you're just not like licking it, going, Oh, look what I found. <laughs> I got playing with it and turning it to see if it does anything. <laughs> no. I put oh, it no. on the boat. I wrap so up my cloth. Hannibal, he walks up to you, introduces himself. He's like, he's like, we saved your family in, in India. He's like, and, and now we have we have saved you. It's like, of course, by doing this, you now you now belong to us. Oh great. Oh no. We want you to be one of the thirteen. Yes, we want you to we want you to be one of the thirteen. We want you to join us. As we fight against the the people that forced you to do this and took your family. Did something about the hazing? You have to do a three week hazing now. <laughs> That's right. He, he's your thirteen looks that. around. He's like, it's like, Margot, this looks like some pretty good hazing. If I didn't know any better, I'll tell you what, my good man, I'll consider it. If you can whip me up a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> See. Why don't yeah, you run what? the running gag is this guy never gets a drink? <laughs> it's like he looks it's like he looks at the like trying to smoke. I'm like, oh, just gonna make a Brooklyn. Yeah. He looks at Big John Duffin and he's like, You still got that good old that one two punch? Yep, it seemed to be working tonight. I can tell. There's some there's some poor Chinese dude out in the hallway passed out with a dislocated shoulder. You still show well, you got punching? anything else for me to hit? I'm kind of on a roll. Search this room because the tongs, the tongs have a lot of stuff here. This is art. There's tons of art here. Some of it, I'm sure, is stolen. There's got to be a storeroom somewhere around here. Search the room. I'm going to go deal with the police because they're going to be showing up pretty soon here. And I'll run cover for you. Why don't you check out the rest of the, the, the back room and see if you can find anything useful? All right. All right. All right. Maybe, boss. Maybe there's a drink in there for you. Yeah. <laughs> and the in the fall in the, the purple smoke dissipated once the the uh, pyramid closed. So we're feeling that the whole scene feels fairly inert at this point. I mean, nobody's yeah, I mean if I mean Something horrible might happen, but the feeling at the moment is, yeah, it's, you know, we've cleaned these clowns out. Things look normal. All right. So, so I'll talk to you guys while you work. Search the place. I put the stuff on the table. I take my Tommy gun back out. So there Just was else pops up. There was the guy sitting at the table. He was a German dude. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and he was in a suit. Yeah, he's still in the suit, but he's just missing. His like, outer yeah. fleshy covering. Okay, but he's still in the suit. Yeah. You know, this oh. place is pretty disgusting. Uh, why don't we just clean out that storeroom and get out of here? I'm getting, uh, I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. It's just, I'm going to search his suit pockets real quick. All right. He's got, he's got about six dollars in cash on him. He's got a, he's got a handgun, um, in a holster, and he's got a signet coin. With a swastika on it. Oh, I'll take the coin. That could become in handy. Uh, that's probably yeah, okay. Uh, and I'll take the pistol. Okay. Look, I've got a gun too. 
that just Groovy, doesn't baby. inspire any confidence in me by the way so so hannibal is like picking at the the german the german guy's german's body and like as he's moving the suit around you can hear it like kind of like well like when you peel something sticky Squishy. off of things yeah it's, it's squishing yeah <laughs> rather than just dusting right i mean look it just it just smells like if you're at, at a butcher shop i mean there's nothing I, I say something under my breath about the hell of sticky flesh and just kind of continue on. <sighs> so who's, I, who's searching the room? I'll search. I'll yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm searching, searching as I'm well. I'm searching the room. I'm getting right, antsy. Right. Now, I have no idea what I'm looking for, but I'm searching. All right. So there's a fireplace and there's a there's a damper uh, pole. There's two statues of two Mongolian warriors. And then there's other other statues and stuff, along with some tapestries. Um, Flint, roll one d ten, and one through five, something's gonna happen. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Don't worry, uh, don't worry, Blix. We don't have we don't have big explosives. Okay. Wait a second. It's a, what, what do I do here? Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting a fight from my dice set here. It's trying to sell me a new dice set here. Stop. Okay. We're, gonna send, uh, we're gonna have to send Flint some D tens. Some yes, yeah, so, yeah, I, I oh okay, here we, here we go. Okay, uh, I got a hold on, let me clear. I got a one and a three, a two. Oh, good. So I don't need you to roll one D ten, but you rolled a one. So, so Big John Duffy's just like messing around, and he's kind of like bumping stuff, and he pulls on the the damper thing. And all of a sudden, the fire goes out, and it slide the fireplace slides back, and there's it reveals a stairwell. A covered let me uh, see. Interesting. Ah, classic stairwell in the fireplace. He suddenly revealed stairwell. <laughs> that, that 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 we know there's not going to be a problem down there. The old stairwell in the fireplace trick. All right. Pulp, pulp trope twenty three. No, right. <laughs> I had to have some pulp trope in here. <laughs> It's Jay, think, 13, not like not like Jay's hell on earth. Part Jay, I take my off and clean them, you know. And I say, well, I send the mechanics, but they're quite interesting. I must say. What they dig behind the fireplace? <laughs> and what, and what do we find back there? All right, so you go down the stairs. There's a giant storage room with tons and tons of crates. They literally run the entire length of the club. And at the far end... Is the Ark of the Cup? No, sorry. <laughs> at the far end, it looks like there is another door. And there are two men standing in front of it. Oh. Who, look identical, guys look who like? look identical to the ones that were standing guarding the Cyclops that you just dealt with. Oh, boy. Not more of these guys. And they just got chowdered. Yeah, you know, those guys got chowdered off screen, so we don't really know what took them out, right? Right. Um, I'll look at the nurse and kind of like then eyes go down to her um, to her gat case. Yeah, I grill them. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, Steve. All I can say, all I can say is, I, I did try to do right by you in this character as much as I could. I say, young lady, give him what for? <laughs> so I rolled a 59. I got a bonus five, so it makes it a 54. My reflex is an 89. So I did not meet half, but I hit. All right. Then so he rolls for he rolls for location, right? This is a D10. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and roll D10. Eight. Are we pulling legs off that. again? Yeah. Obviously, no body hits today. I'm so yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna start. Right. Uh, I, sorry. I mean, Nurse uh, Margot. I mean, you're 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 a hitman, so I mean, this this works for you. Make him suffer a little bit. I, so, I shoot him. I do. Uh, you said it was plus one for a burst. So I rolled a seven plus one is eight for damage. Okay. You eight. blow. You blow a leg off. Ouch! That's kind of all right. And the other <laughs> one starts running at you guys full sprint. And it's, it it opens its mouth up, and the tongue come, and tongue starts rolling out as it's running at you. Mm. Oh no! Right. Oh yes. I still have one thing to do, and that is to hit it or kick it. And I have no weapons. 
Yes, you you got a weapon. What's my weapon? Look at your gear. I gave you I, a I weapon. I look at my gear. Oh, you gave me a baseball bat? No, it's a baseball. Uh, I, I got a baseball. Okay, so I line up. Okay, good. I, I'll, I'm, going, I'm good with the baseball. I, I normally don't think of that as a weapon, but okay, I'm good Flint, with the baseball. Flint asked for weapons. I'm like, dude, it's like, no, all the weapons are there. Trust me. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm doing I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm doing my best. Uh, wind up target the thing and throw with all of my might but controlling all right give us a roll okay so here we go okay so first is going to be four next is going to be nine yeah it's gonna hit um give me a give me a roll one d10 to see location i got that right Greg. Uh, right what's that yeah. he's throwing, he's throwing locate, yeah um, four i hit yeah. the four Oh no, another shoulder. Well, what's the um I know this is the fun part of it. You can actually aim shots in this. It's just uh it's just basically half or quarter your skill, but you have to call it before you do it. But what um what do you have in do you have throwing as a skill? Uh yes, throw. I do. Well I've got uh, it's a throwing, but I have a zero next to it. That's okay, so you can't really bump it. Um so yeah, it's basically another this is the All game right. of arms see here uh, basically right. whatever you, wherever you hit i him, hit it hurts but yeah you hit him with a baseball it. and you actually spin him because it hits so hard um yeah because big john duffy has like the max that you can have for strength okay so yeah you 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 line drive he knows he's been, he knows right he's now. been hit he knows he's been hit he's spinning around Yes, he is now spinning. And see, so the nurse shot that leaves. Oh, you got a gun, Peter. I do. I was waiting my turn. Yes, I will. Uh, I'll take a shot. Why not? You got no skill for it, so you got to roll low. Definitely don't. Uh, is this dex or reflexes? Pistol shooting is dex. Dex. All right. Here it goes. Nope, that misses. Uh, but I got doubles. Does that mean anything? Uh, we have to hit in order for it to okay. be, yeah. That's well, okay. Be... You hit a crate. Okay. You hit a crate. So Sweet. Hannibal, who does not know how to use a pistol, starts just points it. It's like, pow, 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 pow. Yeah, like, and it's like, not hitting anything. Nope. Foul demon. Drag is like completely like consumed in the book. What have you oh, found? I'm sorry. Today? I just. All right, I'm um, just waiting for my turn, so I'm just educating myself. No thermal detonators, Greg. No thermal detonators. Nope. So is it my turn, or? Well, yeah, we're waiting on you. Oh, yeah. okay. I just because I thought it was that they're still at a distance and it hasn't really closed yet. I've just been. Um, all right, I will. Um... <sighs> I, for this round, what I'll do is I will go running at it, and I will try to do an acrobatic flip to get behind it. Uh, oh, okay. Why don't you give us that roll for that acrobatic flip? All right. So, ooh, zero, seven. So I easily made my quarter. So basically, I matrix my ass like in the air and bounce off crates and parkour and land behind <laughs> it with my sword. So... Um, that'll be oh, my action this turn. That's cool. Yeah, that that was that was epic, Drag. That was epic, dude. Okay, you you yeah. Red Lotus goes doo, 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 runs up the side of a crate, up on the ceiling, and down the other side, and drops behind him. All right, so that's my turn. All right, so let's see. There are four of you, which means we break out the pyramid and do a little one, two, Drag. It's going to attack you. To try to get you with his tongue of love. All right, 63. That is going to be. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going to open the book up to see what the. Look up tongue in the uh, the weapon <laughs> section. Oh no this this was this was the Asian 13 book. So I had I was using different stats for it. Okay. Um, no, it's actually gonna miss just barely. 
that tongue almost hits you. It runs as along the side of a crate and cracks the crate open, and a whole bunch of of um, machine guns fall out. Oh, oh wow! So I'm getting myself a real weapon. This baseball here, I'm using a machine gun. I don't know how to do it, <laughs> but I'm using it. <laughs> here it comes. Don't worry about a thing, folks. <laughs> you thought you thought the 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 professor the electronics professor was bad. Wait till you get the boxer for the Tommy gun. Yeah, I have fun with this. All right. Yeah. So, is that what you're doing, Flint? You're gonna grab a Tommy gun? I I mean, yeah, I might as well. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm tired of hitting stuff. Okay, you know, I'm no no matter what happens, I'm hitting him in the shoulder. I already know that. Okay, so what do I what do I roll two? Two D ten. Yep. And that'll be your deck. You rolled 10 total? No, 10 for the first one and 10 for the second one. I rolled doubles. Uh oh. Wow. That's an 11. No, it's. That's that a double zero? Double that's zero. A, that's like a headshot critical. I mean, that's dead. I. What the heck, Flint? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> not how roll in this game. It, it starts to go zero to 99. Yeah. yeah, this is called this is called beginner's luck. I never used one of these Tommy guns before. I like it. You know, it's kind of you know, it's I got to add on to the baseball, which now, is also we... awesome because uh, if the character doesn't have a machine gun skill, it would be a quarter, but it's a zero zero, which is like the best roll in the book, and it's a critical headshot, which is a kill. So yeah, so that's kind of cool. He probably just did that like Jack Burton with the machine gun thing and like went. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It was, I tried it one time and I did it. I'm kind of liking this. I think I'll hey. be uh, Machine Gun Jack after this. Hey, Drake. <laughs> Gun Jack. Uh -huh. Give me a dex roll because you were standing right behind it. All right. It's fine. And actually, you do have something that could prevent you from getting hit, too. I know, but I I want to do that in like a cool reveal, not like... Okay. Well, yeah. No, I, I, will, I will roll dex. Uh, oof. Well, that's a 60, so my dex is 73, and I'll be happy to burn a luck point to kind of get out of the way. Okay. All right, I'll let you burn the luck point. Okay. So, yeah, so you fire, and, like, the dude, you blow his head off, and then, actually, when his head explodes, everything just turns to white powder and, like, sprays everywhere. And so Red Lotus is covered in this white powder. That's now you're not Red Lotus. Now you're White Lotus. <laughs> I'm in white face, man. That's not fair. Oh, that's just wrong, man. Bump, bump, bump. Sorry. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Anyways. Have Mike edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We still got so, the whole floor right there's up. One more, there's one more left in the, on the back door. Well, I'll shoot again. <laughs> go, go right ahead, Hannibal. What's the worst you gonna do? Shoot yourself in the foot? I don't know. If what you roll a ninety-nine, you know you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh nah, forty-nine. I missed. All right. Because Hannibal is still like pop, 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 and it's not. Yeah. No. Um. Everything. Damn it. <laughs> Dreg, what do you want to do? There's one by the door. Um. I will I will go running at it and swing my sword. All right. Go in for the attack. And I am going to go for a called shot. So I'm going to go for a headshot, yeah. which basically I need to roll a 17 or under. And I roll a 97, uh -oh. which oh, I think... Too <laughs> off for the, the jinx roll. <laughs> I think I badly effed up so let me um yeah because that's considered a bad break uh oh yep on a 95 to 98 the character suffers a minor misfortune gun jams hand slip on a car steering wheel causing the loss of control and a 99 is just the horrible thing like you know your hair catches on fire or whatever <laughs> so i'm sure my sword goes flying out of my hand and into one of the crates actually your sword misses the 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 dude and sticks in the door. Okay. And it's stuck in the door. Got it. Um, Nurse Margot, what would you like to do? Well, can I fire down there and not 
shoot Red Lotus. Yeah, you're a you're a hit woman. I like that. Hey, okay. did you did you look at did you look at your powers? Oh well, yes. Okay, just making sure. All right, go ahead and shoot. Well, the gun is much funner right now. <laughs> much Blix fun. is like, why don't I have powers? I get a stupid <laughs> power. Everyone else has cool <laughs> powers. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go to my power, Big John punches him in the face. <laughs> uh, that's all I know how to do. But now that I found out about this gun thing, I don't know. I like I like this gun thing. I'm shooting my gun thing. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance to look at some of the crap? Uh, 65, and my dex is a 73, so I bake it. Uh, location is 10, 0. Oh, we have another kill. So right as right as it's about to wrap its tongue around Red Lotus's neck and, and take her head off, his head explodes from gunfire and he turns into this white powder and the white powder drops all over the ground. There you go. More white powder, Red Lotus. I love it. <laughs> Rolling a dollar bill as we speak. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> Edit that one too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. We do not promote drug use or any type of um, games. Games, but games. <laughs> all right. So there is the door, and on the side of the door to the right, there it looks like there is an engraving of like what would be a pyramid or a triangle. Huh. I, I think it looks familiar to all of us. Yep, it's about the size of the triangle, or would have been about the size of the the thing mm -hmm. that Nurse Margot took. There you go. Oh, I does it look like a key? A key, yeah. I don't know if we want to open this door. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, damn right we do. Yes, right. we have to. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're doing it. All right. All right. So Nurse Margot puts sticks to the pyramid, sticks it on the door. And the door or on the the engraving, and then you hear this click click, and then the, the pyramid turns click click, and the door opens up, and there is a tunnel, a carved out tunnel with with oil lanterns, very old oil lanterns, and it leads down down down, and they're lit. Yep, of course they are. Who, who lit these? All right. All right, down that down the uh, tunnels. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm taking my machine gun with me. Yeah, I would ask this because uh, I would actually ask to use my sixth sense ability. But honestly, it would be like, oh, is there anything bad going to happen down that tunnel? Yeah, I'm sure. That's yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh. You don't need no sixth think... sense to know that, Ace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, would you would you like a legit answer? No, I'm not going to use it up right now. Right. I'd rather wait for, oh, look, that device. It's right. it going to be bad to use it. You you got you don't have a you don't have a bad feeling about it. Not quite. It, it, they don't you don't sense any danger, let's just put it that way. Okay. So yeah, let's let's go down. I would say that um we should probably have our machine gun happy boxer like in the front. Just so yeah, like, here I come. What, what do you want me to do? What walk in shooting? front with your gun out. So if anything jumps All in right. front of us, I'm walking out it. in front with my gun out, looking as big as I am. Big grin on my face. I got I got the machine gun here. I got Are the baseball. To... I'm kind of bouncing it in my other hand just because I feel bad for you know, you know, like you know, throwing the baseball over. It's kind of like I dumped the baseball, but you know, I'm I'm bouncing the ball in my hand. So, so Nurse Margo, are you going to take the pyramid with you guys when you go down the, the tunnel? Or are you going to leave it there? Oh, we're taking the pyramid. Okay. So we, if it does pop off easily, the door doesn't shut behind you, which is a good thing. Um, so you guys start start going down this tunnel. The tunnel goes for a mile and a half. So you guys are walking forever. And it doesn't oh. even it doesn't curve or anything. It just goes down down, which means it goes underneath all the rubble that they built Manhattan on. And goes into the earth. And follows down, upside down sinners. Hey, do you think we're still in New York? Well, it's a lot like Jersey to me. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. You're right in Jersey by now. Smells like Jersey. 
Everybody's gonna bag on Jersey. <laughs> I've already been in New Jersey. I shouldn't talk like that. Hey, hey, I watched Jersey Shore, so y'all can kiss my butt. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. So as you go down. All right, so at the end of the hall of this long tunnel, it opens up into a large room with three tapestries um, hanging from the ceilings or hanging down on the walls from the ceilings in front of large royal looking seats that are made of pure, look like they're made of pure gold and they're carved. Um, each tapestry is of a person, one woman and two men. Um, with one man's, one of the gentleman's faces is distorted into a huge, large smile. In front of each seat, there's a pedestal with a triangle engraved into the tops as if something belonged there. Why am I thinking the pyramid goes there? Dreg, you do, because you have occult knowledge, and you've been tracking the triumvirate, you do recognize it. Each of those figures represent the each member of the triumvirate. Huh. I, at least, I so, will, at least uh, so you've heard. It, the what you've seen in your in your travelings include include victims who've had their their cheeks pulled back and hooked into their skulls with giant hooks, um, who look like they look like they're extremely happy, but they were dead. And then other ones that have been been shriveled up like raisins. And then of course the ones that had no no skin. No skin. Yeah, I will. The, I will. I will pass that information on as I'm kind of like looking at it and kind of moving my fingers over the 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 image. Now the woman uh, you see, who's actually at the what would be the head of this the triangle or the the peak, she looks awfully like or close to resembling Empress Wu, who is a notorious Chinese empress who may have murdered a whole bunch of people in her day, including her family members, to maintain power. Hmm. I also passed that information on as well. And I'm just kind of going, well, it looks like we are getting in deep, gentlemen. Well, maybe, maybe it's time to go back. We got our bends. <laughs> I think this guy's going on strike until he gets a drink. No, I'm just saying that we will ever leave here. So, so Nurse Margo, you gonna go play with the pyramids or the pyramid? Yeah. Did you say there was a spot to put it in or another? Yeah, there are three. There are three pedestals, um, that go with each of the tapestries. And so, on each pedestal, there's a triangle. Oh boy, Red Lotus, what do you think? <laughs> This is dealing with um, very strong and powerful magics. I would, well, I would, I would use caution. Well, is one of them better than the other? My well, I will go ahead and use my sixth sense. Ooh. All right, the ped the pedestal with the the figure from the tapestry that looks like he is Egyptian and like an Egyptian mummy. Uh -huh. That one is definitely giving you not so friendly vibes. All right, and I point that one. I said, "This one, you leave alone," <laughs> or I stand back over there while you play with it. This one, okay. All right. So I'll try one of the female ones, then. Right? Those two females or one male? You said? Uh, two males, one female. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try the female. All right, you put the pyramid on her pedestal and nothing happens. Woo! Say <laughs> Alakazam! <laughs> I turn, can I turn the pyramid in the slot? Does it like motion? Nope, it just, it just like, it literally just like fits in tight. Okay. Oh, that's me. I, I guess I'll go try it in the. Rub it like Egyptian mummy one. All right, so you go and do it with a gentleman, the tapestry with a smile, and you put it down, and there's a light breeze, but nothing happens. Yeah. In this movie, it doesn't end well for us. 
<laughs> As I said, you are dealing with powerful. Can I magic. shoot it? Should I just shoot it? Hmm. I don't think a bullet would solve our conundrum. I know, but it'd be fun. <laughs> Mm. Wait, what else? What else is in the room, Jay? Um, three thrones and three pedestals and three tapestries that go with each each throne. So the throne. Yeah, there are three th three thrones. Should somebody be sitting in the throne? Hey, uh, not me, not me. Yeah, it, it just does not sound like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree with that. I'm not sitting in the throne. I get your soul sucked. <laughs> or maybe that's a body for the thing to inhabit. Right. Oh, that would make Jay's day. And why do you think that? I I really <laughs> toned down my my Macar. <laughs> uh, bodies. We've got you know tongues lash on. That's not macabre. We got the that's Chinese folklore. Stanley. Oh, I tell you. Good thing you didn't read my Japanese horror module. What does what does the pyramid look like? It is a gold pyramid right. with with um, engravings on it. In fact, right. the engravings on it match the engravings on the throne that that they haven't put the, on the pedestal yet, or the there pedestal they haven't placed yet. There it is. That's where it goes. <clears throat> the one that that Red Lotus said was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying put it on there. I'm just saying. Well. I've got two levels of fearlessness, so I put it in. Oh god! <laughs> All right, this so one you put you put it in, and then the a strange purple mist starts coming up out of the stones around you guys, no, just up to probably about waist level, and it's very very thick. Oh, um, and three figures appear, one in each throne. Uh, and so this head, is the same purple mist we saw before, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm so, right next to the pyramid. If something goes wrong, I knock it out. <laughs> I just pick it right up. <laughs> so at the at the head of it is a is a young Chinese woman wearing royal garb, who clearly looks looks like the woman in the tapestry. To the left of her, which is the the one with the smiles, there's a man sitting there in in traditional um, in very ancient Chinese robes, and his cheeks are. He has hooks in his mouth, meat hooks, that are pulled up like this to give him a huge, sickly-looking smile. And he looks extremely happy, even though his face is, you know, pulled back. And then the mummy-looking so one... Me. <laughs> the mummy-looking one is a gentle, is a is wrapped in, looks like human flesh bandages. And I know there's kid. nothing macabre in this game. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> no, it's not, not at all. It's not macabre. Perfectly normal. They're they're leathery bandages. Some of them look flesh. Sunday night family <laughs> movie. Fresh, fresh. Anyway, wonderful world of Disney. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so he sit he, he's sitting there. Oh, Perkins, wild, wonderful world of macabre. <laughs> I I apologize. It was not. It did not come out right. Anyways, he's sitting on the throne, and he they all turn and they look at they look at Nurse Margot. And then the top of the throne, the top of the throne, the top of the pyramid slowly starts to open. I pull oh, the pyramid off. The tentacles come out. I pull the pyramid right off. Boop. You gonna go grab the pyramid? I'm standing right next to it. I just knock it right off the pedestal. I right. pull it out, knock it off, take it out. You knock it off the pedestal and it is Right before it hits the ground, it floats up, and then the the mummy-looking gentleman reaches out, and then it slowly goes towards his hand. He only does that. Uh, I knew I had a bad feeling about that. I'm yeah. shooting the, the pyramid. Okay. I probably not shooting the pyramid. Can you, but... can you need to roll. You need to roll under a ten. So. I haven't anything with it yet. Let's see. Zero four. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> go get your daughter. I want to make sure you're not cheating. <laughs> Here, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Here you go. Look. Dun, dun, dun. 
I wow. Did. Oh my god. No way, dude. All Critical. right. Crit, crit, crit. So you shoot the pyramid. On the safety of the helicopter. And when it yeah, when you hit the it, when the bullet hits the pyramid, it drops to the ground, the room starts to shake, and the fig the three figures vanish in the and the mist vanishes as well. And you hear footsteps coming down the tunnel. Turn from and behind? spin. Yeah, from behind you guys. Okay. Good shooting. Hey, I, I look. I look at a a a a. Is it what? Uh, you can go every again. <laughs> All right. What am I doing? Am I am I? Uh, I I can punch it, throw a baseball bat it, or machine gun it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know how to do. I I like these gun things. Man. It's pretty cool. Okay, good. I'm I, I'm machine gunning it. Okay, I roll a three and a three. Switch to the pyramid. I'm machine gunning a pyramid. Oh, you shooting the pyramid? Okay, I was like, are you shooting down the hallway? Because that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, what the heck? Wow, All and right. a 33, that's a crit, too, man. That poor pyramid. <laughs> yeah, I'm just shooting the pyramid. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm like tired of this pyramid stuff. All right. right. You, shoot, you shoot the pyramid, and you rupture it. Uh -oh. And the room goes, the room starts to get very windy. There is a purple haze that starts emanating from the ground again. <laughs> and, and six of those... The <laughs> white fellows appear running. along with the three figures again. I'll leave the room. You're running. Huh? You're running? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So the first person you run into is Agent 13. You're running up the hallway. He's like, Where are you going? Not that way. Not that yeah. way. That's the wrong way. <laughs> I'll just go, Ancient Chinese demons that way. <laughs> you shut this door. <laughs> okay. Flint, are you running too? Uh, I, well, I mean, I'm, I've exposed my. Well, I mean, I've still got shots, I guess, left in this thing. I'm looking at it. I'm seeing the purple haze. I don't really much like running. I'm just going to stand there. Oh, all right. I'm a tough guy. All right. All right. So Big John Duffy stands there, and the the mummy looking. Yeah, uh, come get me. I, yeah, no, I'm doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, so they start speaking to you, but you don't speak Mandarin, so it doesn't really help. Um, Talk so English. You all can you all can hear this rumbling voices. Greg, in your case, you can actually where Lois understands what's being said to a degree. It's a very ancient dialect, though, and it's like it's something along the line of three or one. Our souls are one. You did not bring us. Therefore, you should leave. This is the gift of the triumvirate. And so one of the, the henchy men looking things picks up the box, the, like they pick up the pieces and they slowly start putting it back together and it almost like melds back together. <clears throat> and then they walk it over like as a tribute to the mummy looking fellow and hand it to him. When they do, the box vanishes along with all of them. And then the room starts to shake and the walls and the ceiling starts to cave in. All right. We already had a head start running. So, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I'm going to start, I'm going to start running out of you. Oh, machine gun, the ceiling is falling on me. I just kind of picture the Scooby Doo run where someone jumps in like the other's <laughs> arms and they're carrying him. Like... So, so run, let us run fast. The big, the big thing about, about boxing. <laughs> So boxers, I, I watched a great boxing movie last night. I was tell, told fun about last night. So the the guy runs behind a car to train. So you guys are running, and all of a sudden, Big John Duffy comes barreling through, like boom, 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 like runs past you in the tunnel. That's feeling real Scooby, okay? Yeah, but not not in a Scooby way. But you, you're like you're running up the tunnel, doing your like you got your machine gun in one hand, but you're doing your your you kind of your your dodging boxing run type thing. And you you ask them like I mean you see them they're running but they're not running very fast but you're you've got your you've got your your pace going. So yeah, we just watch him run, like locomotive right by us. Yeah, that's like a locomotive by you. So you guys get out of the tunnel eventually. So you run the full mile. I 
actually, hey, what's everyone's constitution? Because I don't think Nurse Margaret's going to make the mile like like everybody else. I'm yeah. 51. 58. Uh, 70. 67. All right. Yeah, okay. Nurse Margo and yeah. So so yeah. you get to the half you get to the half mile mark. And, uh, Big John Duffy sucking wings. <laughs> he stopped for a second. He, he catches breath. Uh, uh, uh. And Nurse Margo catches up to him and, and she's sucking wind a little bit. And uh the other two are they, they keep running stuff. Eventually you get out of the tunnel. Um and when you do, the, the door to the tunnel. It just seems to like turn to pow- like this white powder, and then behind behind it, because the door shuts, and as everything disintegrates away, it's just a stone wall. Mm. And now, what you have at your feet is a whole pile of white powder. Well, hopefully, the demons will be sealed in here for another hundred years. Well, do we do something with this white powder? This white uh-huh. powder, and we just kind of keep blowing it off. Is there some purpose to this white powder we should know about? Um, can I make my occult uh, Chinese mysticism to see if this powder yeah, has go any? Ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, while he's doing it, while he's thinking about it, I'm like scooping some of this white powder up, and he's like, "Let's do this in the lab." <laughs> All right, I actually oh, fail that roll, so I'm just looking at it, just kind of going, "I'm sure it has some purpose." Oh, I've got chemistry. We'll take it back to the lab. <laughs> Okay. So Agent thir- Agent Thirteen, um, he meets you guys downstairs. He's like, he's like, okay, we're gonna go upstairs. Just pretend like nothing happened, and we're gonna walk right past the police. Right. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys do. You go. And of course, he looks at Big John Duffy. He's like, um, I don't think you're gonna be able to walk past the police with a Tommy gun. All right, I'll leave it behind. But we should be able to get you one. So don't. That should not yeah, be a problem, yeah. my friend. I'm liking this thing. I, you know, I, yeah, I, I'm liking this thing. Upgrading my act a little bit. All right. Make it a lot so, easier in the boxing ring, too. Oh, my God. So you guys go back to the, the one of the safe houses in Manhattan that the 13 has. And you do your, you start running your tests on the white powder. And what you find is the white powder is pure opium. Oh. China white. <laughs> huh. They turn oh, it into <laughs> No wonder my mysticism didn't, I didn't understand. This is actually well, a drug. Well, takes that and keeps it. <laughs> oh, I could use this in medicine. Right. Ease your and pain. Then, also at this, also at the safe house, Hannibal Khan is brought is you reunited with his wife and children. Nice, yay! All right. So yeah, what did you? Great. So what did you? What did you learn from from this adventure, gentlemen? Um, uh, demons turn into opium. So right, next time we kill. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that opium, opium is made of demon powder. Right. Basically, that I mean, that's we, and I love that. I mean, that's like that's like the a good theory for it. And so, basically, the triumvirate or organizations like them harvest demons and activate demons in order to kill them and then create opium. Right. <laughs> but every once in a while, one gets free, and that's when they do the opium trade, and a little bit of the demon gets into the people who use it. Oh wow! So, I mean, the, that, that, I was what? gonna say that actually gives a lot of meaning to riding the dragon in a way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, that, this is exactly the kind of stuff Agent Thirteen should do. In other words, you take a mystical thing, you turn it into a human, you know, a, an actual resource-based object like opium, which is translate to money and stuff like that, and then you turn it into a spiritual thing. Where it's in fact de- what what opium is a way of infesting people with demons. So it's pretty good, pretty good metaphor for the real world. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a brilliant mythology. I mean, I, I'm gonna use that in the next book when well, next time I get around to writing one. Nice. Well, what I'm it's interested in 35 years, so it may not be a big hurry. Why? What I'm interested in is the connection still between the Brotherhood and the Triumvirate, and then what the German Nazis have to do with all that and how they were getting involved. So. 
So the gen the gentleman that was meeting with them was one of Himmler's officers. So they were trying to figure out what the pyramid was. And they thought that the, the Brotherhood might be able to tell them what it was. So they brought the pyramid to the Brotherhood. They, okay. Yeah, they they knew they knew the pyramid was on the ship, and so they 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 board, basically boarded the ship, activated the pyramid, and like, oh yeah, this is this is interesting, and then sunk the ship to hide the evidence that that the thing was ever there. And then they so brought that, that not Nazi mysticism search type of stuff. Yep. Okay. Was, yeah, I mean was, the the th the way to look at the Brotherhood is. The the Brotherhood is not out selling drugs. I mean, they're they're playing a much deeper, bigger game than that. But if something is useful in the world that you know will help them to their ends, they will for ten minutes work with the Nazis and then you know you know dump them. Right, but I'm wondering now this open contaminant. You know, not that we're going to go back to demon dust here, but is this opium? If they if the demons do turn into opium dust and then they take the opium dust and sell it in the market, people absorbing demon essence maybe and contaminating folks for some greater purpose later on down that road that's, yes. that's another story i'm not going into in case we were that, another that's another these. story and the brotherhood would not like that that would be the kind of story where the brotherhood and 13 would probably end up on the same side ah okay. the tri yeah, the I mean, basically they may use the demon stuff for you know to to generate some kind of mystic energy but they're acutely aware of the fact that it's dangerous and destructive. Especially since they lost two people in the, in the mix of this, the whole, whole incident. Yeah. So. I mean, the Brotherhood's not, you know, they're, they're evil and they want power, but they're not, you know, they're not, you know, worried about money. They don't care about money. You can't rule the world if you destroyed it. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're not, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, I love, I love just the general theme of, of, you know, Evil aligned groups don't necessarily like each other. I mean, I don't think Charles Manson and Adolf Hitler would have gotten away, you know, along terribly well. Right. Right. So. All right. Well, good game, Jay. Yeah. Well, thank this you very was much, you guys, guys were great. You guys were thank really you. fun. Thank you. Yeah, P Peter, okay. James, and I we came in the well. Drake was already part of the industry, and Peter was part of the industry, but we all ended up coming up together, and then we all went off and did our own things, but. We we had been attached to the hip forever. So when you said pulp, it's like James Carpio is a guy for pulp. And he, I, I, I know I you guys are. I mean, like, yeah, let's figure out something to do. You know, beyond this, because I mean, a, a huge chunk of my life from here on out is going to be about doing pulp. You know, maybe how do I do it in twenty twenty one? You know, it might be it, it might be you know uh, you know the next book may well be a tiki pulp thing, which I've been working on for a while seen that on the Facebook page. I just said, you know, we've been writing, you know, Indiana Jones goes to Trader Vic's kind of stories. But eight, Agent 13 will probably go one of those places. We, You know what we should do, Flint? Uh, so James and I, uh, working with TSR, we, we're we actually, we've released the new version of Top Secret, right? Oh, fantastic. Yep. And uh, I wrote um, I wrote an adventure that I run at conventions using the system, but it's, it's uh, set in World War II. And it's a, um, it's a, it's a Hitler got the bomb first. It's sort of a, uh, an alternate. Uh, so Hitler gets the bomb first and you guys are soldiers going in, trying to like a strike force going in and trying to, to rescue the kidnapped scientists. So you've got, uh, Oppenheimer, uh, Einstein and, uh, Fermi, I believe it is, uh, that you're trying to rescue. And there's, uh, um, some plutonium. The only plutonium they've managed to enrich uh, is there as well. So it's a really cool little fun adventure. Uh, some yeah, it's great and stuff. I know. So I mean, I, World War II kind of pulp. If you move, you know, that's that's exactly. We're all doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, this this just something I wrote. It's just like an exhibition type of thing. So uh, we should do that. We should we should do well. James and I we do a um, we do put together a, a live stream top secret game from time to time. Uh, and we're wow. we'll doing one soon. So if you want to join us, it'd be awesome. I would love to. Yeah, I mean, because you know, what we're working on with the Tiki Pulp, imagine one of those bombs goes off and is a rip into, into a universe and alternate world. And there are tropical islands you can't, like, you know, voluntarily go to. But things mm -hmm. rip and you get there. Mm -hmm. And usually everybody that ends there is, either, is both pursuing something and running from something. Ah, Nobody's okay. there by accident. I mean, it's got a will of its own. It it basically manifests in ancient intelligence. Yeah, and the last part. I mean, though, go ahead. 
What say what? Oh no no go ahead. I'll I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh no 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 interrupt me all you want. I mean you know basically I've been working on Zanga for like you know we've been doing ten years of stories on this, where it's basically that's the whole thing about the world, you know and uh, uh, you know because it just is this tropical world where you find everything and and the idea is almost any character can find themselves there you know time wise. But also, we just want to get drink recipes in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Take a look. You can see a link on my page, the Tiki Wiki Tiki, and we are very sporadic about how we we build this. But they, we're now. I mean, I, I got I got kind of a bite on a TV series about it, so I, now I'm I'm activating it a little bit more. Yeah, the the, the pulp setting that I'm working on right now um, is called the Utopian, and it's um, basically it's. The year 2000 in the eyes of 1938. So it's basically how 1938 would have seen the year 2000. So it's still this like incredibly dystopian art deco sort of pulp world where like basically freedom is being hung on to by kind of a Doc Savage type who has yeah. been basically rounding up freedom fighters in order to like dismantle the, you know, so we have jetpacks, right? That was uh -huh. great. There's yeah. jetpacks, right? Because they thought we were going to have jetpacks, right? Yep, jetpacks, silver lame jumpsuits, all that fun well, stuff. Well, that, that gets into the other whole thing I have to deal with, and that is I got, speaking of jetpacks, I got to deal with Buck Rogers one of these days, too. So that's that's an entirely different conversation. Funny note on Jay's character yep. creation there. I was telling Flint about this earlier. Um, with Big John Duffy, uh, I actually know a line producer named John Duffy who's actually a rather large and buff New Yorker, so I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> that is funny. Um, and so I love the fact you guys have restarted TSR. That's the other thing that I love. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, it just, uh, you know, I mean, how somebody lets that go into public domain, and I can't believe Hasbro isn't using some weird legal argument for, um, yeah, for why we're still using that trademark. It's very vital to us, but that's great that you're doing that. They let it, they let it go. That is great. Well, those are actually good guys, and you know, you'll we, you know, we may all end up circling around back to them again because I've been doing a lot of stuff with them lately, and you know, and you know, they can probably help us in certain areas. I mean, I've been mostly just promoting GI Joe and Transformer stuff, but I mean, nevertheless, you know, I, I kind of know the toy people for the first time in decades, and I really like them. Wow, cool, very cool. Yeah, it was fun. So no, uh, let's see. Uh, this I uh, hope this is the first of many conversations about pulp because that uh, I mean you guys have exact you you guys have the holy grail of this stuff to actually have the gaming system, mm -hmm. and Top Secret always seemed like it was a pulp system anyway to me. Well, just to kind of throw that in there too is that the newest version of my game Pulp Era is being developed with Lucky Thirteen, which is the system that I designed for the new Top Secret game. So. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Top yeah. Secret and Pulp are kind of getting married again at some point when I, I get a I chance to finish. Were, you know, because Age of 13 was originally done to kind of give a pulp. I mean, basically it just happened. Marconi and I, I well, I actually went to Comic-Con and bought a bunch of pulps. And Dave Marconi and I are sitting around reading them. And I was saying, is this the best stuff ever? Or, you know, am I just in, in you know, you know, I'm just in a good mood tonight. And he starts reading the Octopus of Crime. It's a Secret Agent X story, and and we agree this is like the best thing ever, you know. And and that's you know that's what powered that whole series. And then he went on to Enemy of the State and Live Free or Die Hard. And you know, I mean, that were a lot of screenplays. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's so, yeah more conversations about this stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, thanks to Jay Libby. Uh, there we go. We got Doc Savage here. Yeah, a, basically a set that has um, like eight of the of the novels. So that's oh, great. Nice. Yeah. Well, if you come up come up to Maine, guys, there's a great used bookstore. I remember I put put it on social media today. Uh, Two Brothers Books on Route One that has wall to wall pulp stuff, which is actually where. Oh, oh great! I had it here somewhere. Where I got Flint's book today. Oh yeah, where I got Agent Thirteen today. Oh, so I, I, and that, was, I went, that was just sitting there in the bookstore. Like Flint, I kid you not. There's a, piles of books everywhere, and I'm talking to the guy who owns the store, and I was like, it's like, God, all this pulp stuff. I got a buddy who's like 
totally into this. And I was talking about drag. I turn and look. It's like, yeah. And today I'm actually running a, a pulp game based on based on a pulp character that a gentleman wrote and that he'll be playing in. And it's like he's like, oh, really? Like, yeah, Asia Thirteen. I turn and look, and there's an Asia Thirteen book sitting like right there. I'm like, wow. That's wow. That, that 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 yeah. defies probability. And okay. I, so- I walked over to my wife, and I'm like, look what I found. She's like, that's impossible. Like right. one of the odds. And I'm like. That is messed up. Well, something else too that I've had for a while is the Agent Thirteen comic book. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah, well, and, and, you, and you only oh, have yeah. one of them. Okay, here's one. Here's the other one. Oh, nice! Oh, That's wow! Just the super wow. secret other one. Uh, I mean, and and Jay, you can forward the PDFs to them if they want to see okay. them. You know, oh, it's yeah. I sent Jay the PDFs of them, of them, and then the because the, there were there were three Agent Thirteen novels. They're all compressed into this. I think that may also be what I sent you, uh, CJ. Is is uh, this is the agent? This is the comp- compiled book books of Agent Thirteen. Then there were seven. Uh, uh, there were uh, there was a year of Assassin Thirteen, which was it was a graphic novel series, comic series that Roger Schleifer and Steve Grant did uh, in ninety one. So yeah, and and then it was with Charlie's Theron. The other thing is a friend of, uh, you know, in uh, 2012, but they were turned into something really weird. Uh, and and then my my uh, producer friend, a guy named Don Murphy, just got the rights to the Spider Operator 5, G8, and Secret 6. I mean, you remember any you know of those things? You read Operator number 5 or uh, G8? And the Spider was basically the shadow. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, those were just... Yeah, those are all, all. Every one of those is one of the the pulp Bible thing. I mean, Secret Agent X was probably my biggest. The shadow, the the shadow is the is is the deceiver in the sense that it's almost undevelopable as a film, as Alec Baldwin proved to us. But uh, um, the the Spider and Operator Number Five are really easy to do. I think I've read uh, G Eight, and I don't know anything about uh, Secret Six. Hmm. But anyway, uh, so he wants to develop a pulp streaming series. He wants oh. it to be an anthology. So you figure out how to cross over all these worlds. But like a, you know, an RPG kind of base, it could be a very interesting way to develop it. Cool. Oh. So pulp is is back and is going to be happening. And it, I, you're, I, you're right. It's all all thirty, you know, all you know, 1936s. It could be 1936 where. World War II never happened, and so everything that followed from it didn't happen. And the world just kept going that way. Right. Yep. You know, the world a looks like that. Very interesting future guests that we're going to try to bring in with you guys too for that one. Great. Great. All right. Uh, well, we we kept everybody way over time. Thanks a lot for coming. I hope Thank you'll you. come back and we'll do more yeah. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, um, what was I going to say? The uh, next week, yeah, it will do Buck Rogers next week. This will we'll, we'll do the role playing game later for anybody who wants to play. Next week is just that, that was part of my book and just part of my life. So I got to deal with Buck. I've been avoiding it all the way through the show, but I got to deal with Buck Rogers. And just <laughs> yeah, it'll be get really, it out of my life. Yeah, it'll be a really good one. Um, yeah, hey, just want to thank everybody for showing up and playing today. Really good time, really good stream. Uh, look forward to doing this one again. And I also want to thank TotalCon for a very generous, unexpected super chat during this. Uh, that's that's very much appreciated. And uh, hey, if uh, folks out there watching want to, uh, if you've got any show ideas, uh, you know, kick us, kick us what you got there. We'll take a look at it. Uh, we're always up for doing some more stuff. And uh, as we sign off, I uh, just want to thank everyone for watching Conda Couch tonight. And after we go offline, I'll thank our guests privately there, and we'll see you guys back next week. Oh yeah, and the book comes out. Uh, yeah, just push the book for one minute. Uh, it comes out in uh, Kindle version next week, August fourth. They yep. delayed it. Yeah, yeah, the games master. Yes, yes. These guys send me their address. I'll get them copies if they want to want to read this. It's a timeless classic, I'll tell you. By all means, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if if you haven't gotten that hardcover, uh, go get that. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Rare Bird Publishing for the signed copies. And as Flint just said, August fourth, the Kindle version will drop, and they're all worth getting. All right, awesome. All right, thank you. All right, thanks very much all for right, watching.